let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for this fellowship. We thank you, Lord, for those you are bring to break bread with us. Father, Lord God Almighty, we ask tonight that your knowledge should abound, that you open our hearts to receive you, to receive your word, to receive life from you, even the life that emanates from your word. Let us grow in knowledge, O oh God, and let us grow in the grace of God to the praise and glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen and amen. My brother, my sister, we serve a wonderful God. Mr. Yandank, good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Did you give your life to Christ? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> what happened? Uh, I think that he 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 took me so he I didn't give my life but he chose me he found me and um he drew me to himself and gave me himself but it wasn't me who gave my life to him so what exactly happened Um, so it's how did he choose you? How did he find you? How did he draw you? Okay. Um for instance, I had no choice about what um of what family I was going to be born into. Um he planned that I'll be born to a Christian home. He also planned that I would attend the churches that I've attended up to today. He planned that I would listen to the things that I've listened to up to this age. And even to that point where I realized him and started building that relationship with him. He was the one who orchestrated everything. Um, I don't think I did anything knowingly or by my power. He designed it. And so that, that's the reason why I said I did not give my life to him. Because if I give my life to him, it would be that I consciously did it. So I knew and then I carried, I just took my life from bed. And then I say, take. But none of this was my by my own doing. It was him who orchestrated everything. Okay, I've, I've gone a bit further than that. But uh, let me deal with some of the things you said. Because some of the things you say, I'm going to contest. So oh. what, what is the significance of the fact that you were born in a Christian family? Because <laughs> what would being born in a Christian family have to do with giving your life to Christ? Um. Okay. So I think it works differently for different people. And because he created me, he understands those things that can draw me to himself. And he puts them. Um, so this is not to rule out the fact that I could have been born in a Muslim family and he still would do what he chooses to do. But what I'm trying to drive at is he created us and so he knows 
what and what to add together to give him the results that he wants from us. That's why I'm trying to drive at. So, yeah, I got that from yeah. you from from, from, the, from the first instance, but I've gone beyond. Yeah. I've gone beyond that question. I wanted to know, mm. you know, I mean, because uh, God can invite you and you can refuse. I wanted to know um, when you said that you didn't give your life to Christ, but that he mm. chose you. When did he choose you? How did he choose you? There must be a mm. when. Well, I think he chose me. <laughs> I think he's, he chose me from my mother's womb, and um, which was why I I said to there must be a time when them. you will when you will answer. Uh yes. So that that's the that's the time when I came to the realization. But that that's probably what made about... you. What brought you to that realization? Um. So I think it's a combination of so many things one the kinds of things i was exposed to the message of god um i had that i've had that from you you've told us all that yeah but i'm saying there must uh, be a specific incident a specific time frame when everything comes together mm. and you now accept Yes, I um okay. So can I so uh, for me <laughs> this happened at a very young age. So I, I really cannot say I I know that from age of seven I was seeing things I was seeing God in my dream. So he will come to me in the form of my father, I mean my old man, and we would play. And that happened for a period of time. But saying maybe when I, whether I walked up to a church and, you know, answered an altar call, I really cannot say. But from that moment, my life just kept, kept growing. The relationship just kept growing, you know, day by day. So um, if I would really answer the question, I would say it's been from that age of seven. When I started to have, you know, that kind of dream, when I started to um understand from, from the age of seven, you would you would not you would not know Christ. You might know God, but not Christ. When did you accept Jesus? Mm, yeah, so that that would be much that would be much older. <laughs> but I um I'm not sure I remember exactly when. Like I said, I just kept growing. I just kept growing, and uh, maybe can I? I don't think I can recall. Maybe fifteen, <laughs> maybe fifteen. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But yes. All right. Yeah. Okay, Thomas. Good evening. Good evening, sir. I'm on the road, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes, you're on the road, sir. Okay, listen, um, I was going to reach you on the phone. We are going to start our counseling on Saturday, okay? Okay, uh, sir. Saturday at 7 o'clock. Okay, sir. Okay. Was... So both okay, of sir. you must, must be, uh, you know, okay. All right, we'll Thank do you, it. Sir. However, you, we can do it on Zoom or just by, by, by WhatsApp. Okay, sir. Thank All you right. Very much. Mr. Olawande. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. How are you doing, sir? Fine, thank you, sir. Did you give your life to Christ? I accepted Christ. I think in my life I accepted him. What happened? Um, sometime in between 1990 and 1991, 
my brother had been in secondary school for about two years and I had just entered secondary school and they had this, I don't know, many people will know him for motors now for that is vibrant minister, Methodist minister. His name is Reverend Jai Simi. He's now in England. He went about evangelizing boys. He was he was the he was a teacher, CRK teacher in Methodist Boys High School. And he just went about evangelizing boys, you know, just encouraging them, you know, giving them going through activities, going everywhere, everywhere, and just he was everywhere. He was going to homes. He was at functions. He was he was everywhere, just evangelizing boys. And through that, he met me. He wasn't my own teacher because I didn't go to my brother's school. He was my brother's teacher. But he met me and he spoke to me about Christ. And he called, he made an altar call. And because I had been inclined to listening to the word of God, I just accepted him, but I didn't really understand what I was doing. But it, what he did was remarkable because the message he gave was about Henry Ford and the manual. Henry Ford being the, the maker of Ford and the car stopped on the way and then a Ford stopped on the way and the man was helpless and Henry Ford drove past. And he, he stopped and he said, what's wrong with your car? He said, everybody has been passing. They couldn't help me. And he thought just looked at it and touched it once. And the car started. And the man was amazed. I said, what did you do? He said, my name is Henry Ford. That means he was the maker of the car. So the, the reverend gentleman told us that God is our maker. And he has a manual for us. He knows all the parts in our body. And he knows how to fix us. That was the message he gave. He made an impact. I gave my life then. It must have been 1991 or 92. I gave my life, but it wasn't... I was on and off and off. But the, 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 the most um, remarkable one was now when I now finished secondary school in 1995. I was listening to a deeper life message. It must have been deeper life because I don't remember who it was. It was on. T I don't know whether it was deeper life because it was on TV. And this man was speaking to my soul. I don't remember how the message went, but he was just speaking that if you don't give your life now, if you don't change your ways, then you will not. You will regret it. And the thing just kept touching my soul, and I started crying. And I started crying. And I started thinking of all the bad things I had done. I started thinking of how I will end. And my mom came. And I told her I have sinned. And my mom was worried. And she said, what did you do? And, and, and I just transformed. And I started reading the Bible so much. And she said, what did you do? Did, and she told my dad. And they were worried. They said, have I, have I, did, was I involved in drugs with people? They were worried because I was really, that thing was really touching me. I said, I've sinned. I've sinned. I've done something. I felt bad, you know, until they now found out that it was somebody that had arrested me and arrested my soul. And since then, I knew that something had touched me. But something remarkable was that was the same year I was afflicted. That same year, because it must have been that episode. Maybe God saw that something was coming and he wanted to arrest me before I, I was I, I I was I was afflicted. It was it was during that episode that I, I fell and I was afflicted. But it was just before then I had to listen to that message. I'm happy that I did receive that message because he now changed everything concerning my affliction. Okay, you know, you, you, you <laughs> I asked you a question with you. I said, did you give your life to Christ? You said, no. You said you accepted Christ. Well, later on, 
when you were talking, you were talking about giving your life to Christ. Okay. So I, I, I wasn't sure why you... Is it the same thing? Well, I, I said, I, the first time I said I, I did not give my life was that because I don't own my life, so I can't give it. But I accepted yeah, but, but the later life on, But later on, you said you gave your life to Christ. Well, I, I must have been... I must have been caught up because in in my in my in my uh, explanation, I was I was I was uh, I was emotional. I was emotional, and I felt I felt when the man asked me, I was using the words of the man on TV. The man said, "Give your life," and I thought I gave my life, but I'm sure it was the acceptance I did rather than give my life. Okay, all right, Wendy, thank you. Um, Sam Ukwa, good evening. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening, Church. It is, it, is the, it is the language of contemporary Christianity to talk about giving your life to Christ. Is it right to talk about giving a life to Christ? Mm -hmm. I've always... I've always actually wondered about it because uh, I'm thinking that how do you give something to, to, to how do you claim to have given something to the owner in, that it was you who gave it to the owner? I, I, I don't know. Maybe I, it's a, a form of expression, but uh, I've never really figured it. I've never, it, it has never sounded what what do what is your problem with it? Apart from the fact that you say, can you give something to the owner? Uh, the truth is that if the you know the owner is he, we under, we believe that the, the the owner gives us something. And then it is a, we have a choice what we want to do with it, you know. So in a in a sense, people might. But, but Muslims about... are not in Christ, so the, the, uh, is Jesus is Jesus not the owner too there? Exactly. So, you don't say exactly. Answer my question. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't exactly no, follow no, but, logic. So when 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 you say uh, um, when you say you give when you say you give your life. I I I I think that I think that it, let me say for example in my own case I would I would I would rather think that he took it rather than say I give it. Why, why it. would you say that? Because I was born into a Christian. Why, why, so, why would he take something which you say belongs to him? Um, okay, let's put it this way. Now. Um, uh, it with, uh, we, based on the based on the fact that I was born in a Christian home, so it was uh, it was more or less an assumption that oh I'm a Christian I'm, I'm I belong to Christ and all that, but in truth, but is that is that I, is that a true assumption? I it is it's a fact of life. It's not necessarily a tr truth because somewhere along the line. I began to have questions, so many questions about this reality that I had been born into a Christian home, and therefore I I I I, I was uh, okay. I'm automatically a Christian, automatically a child of God, and all that. But I had a lot of questions that were unanswered, and I became I became disgruntled with what was going on, and uh, I found that at some point I got fed up and left. You know, I left. I left the church. I went around different different churches. I don't know. I, obviously, I must have been searching for something. And uh, even though I may not have been sure what it was I was searching for, but everywhere, I didn't have any satisfaction anywhere. And then I, at the point, I just got fed up and decided, I, I'm, I beg, I've had it. I'm not stressing myself anymore. So let me let me let me try and break this so that we don't we don't spend too much time on you alone. Number one, Sam. In your judgment, what does it mean to be a Christian? You say you are born in a Christian home. What does it mean? 
we were in a home where we, I mean, we were going to church. We were, we were just girls. We, we believed in God. So a Christian is somebody who goes to church. We had been taught about Jesus Christ. We were taught about God. And we believed in God. We were worshipping him. So, um, is there I, a difference think... between a Christian, somebody who believes in Jesus, and somebody who is born again? Is it not the person who is born again that we can say is a believer? Because some people just by virtue you're of... talking Christian. I'm asking you. You have you have used the word Christian. What is your definition of a Christian? Is a Christian to some a person who is born again? A Christian is a person who follows the denomination of Christianity. A okay, believer so is might, the one. person might not be born again. Yes. A believer is the one who I I, I I prefer to think that a believer is the one who is born again. So when you say you are you are born in a Christian home. That doesn't mean that you were born in a home where people are born again. No, it does not mean so. We, 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 uh, we so are, what I is the value? Are... What is the value of being born in a Christian home? Well, just I think just the the basic introduction to the concept of God, Jesus Christ, Christianity, and all that to and hearing some. What is the value of that introduction? Hmm. The value of that introduction for me or generally? Generally, what's the value of the introduction? Okay. Well, I, I would just say that I would just say that um, the value is just an earlier introduction to that concept than other people who come to it um, later, maybe from from across the fence, you know? So uh, it, I don't know that, that, I don't know that being born in a Christian home necessarily, um, you know, guarantees your, um, uh, guarantees that you are uh, going what to be born again. What does it guarantee, because... if not necessarily? Does it guarantee anything? No. Because there are people who were born in Christian homes and then became uh, Muslims. It does not. It doesn't guarantee anything. Yeah, but you, so why did you, you are the one who brought the matter up now. You say you were born in a Christian home. So if it, did, it doesn't mean anything, why did you bring it up? Because at a point, you each individual uh, has, has to have an experience that you now become convinced that this is the path you want to follow. Yeah, <laughs> Sam, 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 I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna stop you there. Okay, so listen for a little while because you have contradicted yourself fundamentally, and that's part of why we're having this discussion. You started by saying that uh, you you couldn't give your life to Christ. So what you know, if you, if you couldn't give your life to Christ, what difference does it make if somebody is trying to persuade you, persuade you so, so that you can do what? Hmm? You started by saying. You couldn't. You can't give your life to Christ. Then you ended by saying that you needed somebody to give you an introduction. What is the point of what is what is the introduction supposed to do? What can the introduction do to you? Either you can no. give your life to Christ, in which case you might need the introduction, or you can't, in which case you don't need the introduction. But you can't have both, Sam. And I'm now I'm confused because you are expressing. I, I... The... No, because at the, at the beginning, I, I, no, I didn't. No, I didn't say I can't give my life. I said I feel. I feel that he took it, not that I gave it to him. That's what I said. You said I, what? I, I said that I feel that he took it rather than me giving. Okay, it which means you didn't give it. Can a man give his life to Christ? I think he can, I think a man can, when he comes to a certain realization, he can, he can, he can, what's that word now? He, um, um, he can commit to following him. What, I, I don't know the expression, giving his life to I just, I just, I just, I just passing words. Uh, yeah, no, I just I changing, 
I just changing give to commit is you know, I mean it's still the, the initiative is still the man, whether he commits or he gives. Okay, okay. In that respect, uh, the initiative being that of the man, you know, I I think I understand what you mean when you are talking about the initiative. So at some point the the person has to decide whether he's following or not. So in that sense, perhaps there's uh, there's some merit in that um, expression. Okay, okay, okay. So, Sam, just listen in the meantime. Um, um, so to Mr. Delicate, is there a fallacy in this song, I have decided to follow Jesus? I have decided to follow Jesus. Is there a fallacy in the song? Well, I think that yeah, it's not a fallacy. It's not a fallacy because... Uh, in as much as we believe that our, our life, it, God owns our life, He owns us. So when He owns us, He invites us into into a relationship with Him. We can decide, you know, to follow Him, to agree with His terms and condition, and follow Him. Lie, you lie, know? lie, lie, lie. That's not true. No okay. man can come to me except the father draws me. You can't decide. No, what I'm saying is that that you can't the, decide. Don't try and excuse. Mm -hmm. Don't try and excuse a blunder. You can't decide. No man can come to Christ unless the father draws him. It's not your decision. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay, maybe allow you, are, you, 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 talk, you talk yourself out of knowledge now. Mm? Okay, so the way, the part way of I the reason why we're talking. I, I agree. I agree. The way I put it is, is, like, is actually wrong. Uh, what I actually wanted to explain was that uh, he is the one, he owns our life. He has written a script about us, you know, and that script that he wrote, he wrote about us is the path that we follow. Which means that if he doesn't write it, if he's not, we will not have the initiative to do. But because he has already laid a foundation, which we are, we are following, you know, and we just follow the, the path. You understand? But what I don't understand is that the the is there any path at which we can say no? You know, that's the area I don't I don't really understand. Is there any part at which we can say no? Uh, let, 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 I want us to systematize the discussion because I think there are all kinds of um, all kinds of misnomers in Christianity that 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 is just built into it structurally. Even the whole concept of Christianity itself is confusing because all kinds of Jack, Jill, and Harry have claimed to be Christians, and uh, and we, we can't know the difference anymore. I mean that's why I write stories about somebody who who uh, 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 an arm robber that waylaid uh, uh, Jimmy Peters and then told him he's a Christian. <laughs> you know, I say, well, you know, I mean, how do you, how, how, how did he become a Christian? What, what, what is this Christianity? I mean, they, so there must be Christians and Christians and we need to, you know, I mean, the Bible says they're not all Israel that are of Israel. My, my construct, they're not all Christians that are Christians. They are not all followers of Christ. They are followers of Christ. There are so many misnomers. Okay, but let us let us look at it from the concept of the scriptures. Jesus says that you did not love me; I loved you. Okay. Now um, he says you you can't come to me unless my Father draws you. In which case, the initiative is God's, right? And for some reason, he he draws some people, and he draws, doesn't draw some people. He calls some people, and he doesn't call some people. And even the people he calls, he might call them and then not choose them. So in all of this, uh, Okay, which is which is a, a critical message that I've been that I've been preaching, preaching, preaching to people in healing wings and that they've been having difficulty. 
is that God is all in all. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the ending. He's the first and the last. And we have been so indoctrinated because we want to insert ourselves in some somehow something in the into education. Uh, but the critical juncture is always God. It begins with God. It ends with God. So if God wants Dotun, he cannot escape. There's no way that he can escape. I mean, you know, it, 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 go and preach in Nineveh, he tells Jonah. Jonah can't escape. There's no way. Jonah is going to end up in Nineveh. Jonah goes to Tashish. There's a storm. They throw him in the water. No, Jonah is not going to die. The fish will swallow him and he will be he will be vomited back ashore. Then he will say, go to Nineveh. Jonah will end in Nineveh. <laughs> it's going to end in Nineveh because God has determined it. So the will of Jonah can never contradict God. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna um, present. I want to present the the the, 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 the questions in different ways. Let me see who 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 else is here. Um, Festus, Festus, good evening. Good evening, sir. Yes, earlier on, we were talking about, you know, I mean, um, um, Begay said he grew up in a Christian family. Is there an advantage in, in going up in a Christian family? Mm. To me, no. Does growth in a Christian family promote salvation? No, because um, <clears throat> there is no advantage. Um, in some of us that we started from there. It was difficult for us to see Jesus until Jesus now decided to manage us somewhere. Okay, but let, let me let me ask you something. Is there an advantage to your children? Being born to Festus the Kera. Does there have been children of Festus the Kera promote their salvation? <laughs> no. Why do you and say the, no? The, yeah, because um, I, I believe that um, um, also there are God's children keep kept under my care, and uh, the the salvation is personal between them and God, and we come to a time whereby. Um, um, they will be able to see. Uh, they will be able to personalize. What, what, what if what if they grow up and they say we are no we are, we are no longer interested in God? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That they can grow up. Uh, they can grow up and say uh, that is uh, it's like uh, it's like yeah. my brother. I, I, we grow up with don't, don't let's go to your brother. I'm not interested nothing, in your brother. Nothing. <laughs> don't don't let's go to your have, brother. They can wake up. They can wake up and say it's the it's not everybody that it's not true. Okay, that's why that's why you are here tonight. It's not true. Hmm? Uh, especially the killer. Because salvation has come to you. Huh? Hmm. It automatically belongs to your children. Okay, I'm gonna tell you some of these things once. If you want to learn it now, that's your own this thing. Huh? If the salvation has come to you, first of the killer. It automatically belongs to your children. They can go away. They, they will come back. <clears throat> okay? Mm. I'm going to show it to you in the scriptures tonight. Uh, what is, Sam wants to tell us something. So, uh, it just, yeah, it just suddenly crossed my mind now that, yes, there must be an advantage because the, the, the this flew, flashed through my mind um, where God said, um, he knows that Abraham will teach his children about him. That's right. That's, that's and then the, the second thing that flashed through my mind was teach a child in the train a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Which he, means he will not that depart. It, when if the child is born in my house, I'm going to teach him about God because God knows that so so and so Sam will teach his children about God. 
and when they are old, they will not depart. And then it now occurred to me, where I, because I found out at the point in time in my life that um, <clears throat> because of uh, ancestral um, practices, some 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 people are are, are already um, uh, uh, dedicated to the family deities and so on, <laughs> even without their knowledge, even without their knowledge. You yes. Know? So before my own children were born, each and every one of them had been dedicated to Jehovah from the womb. So it be, that already automatically puts them into a contract with God and with the determination that if I teach them about God and he says that when they grow, they will not depart, then I have started the foundation for them to understand God and continue from there after. That's oh, what just Sam, comes to Sam, my don't, don't insert yourself into it. Even if you don't teach them. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't mean that. What I mean is that, I mean, since... <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm telling you something. Even if you don't teach them, because salvation has come to your house. That's another mm -hmm. factor you have just said, uh, which makes okay. so much sense. Let, 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 let's look at some scriptures. Okay? We won't have time. There are, there are, too, there are too many. We won't have time to, to, to look at too many, but let's, let's look at one or two, right? Um, sorry, let me, let me arrange this thing so we are not there. Wait. This is not disturbing. Uh -huh. Okay, so this one is Acts sixteen eleven. So they said, believe on the, 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 the man said, what will I do to be saved? They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. Okay. It's automatic. Right? It automatically goes to him. And to his house. That's why you know another man said, "As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord." Okay, man can speak for his house. Uh, in, in fact, you know, if you have some, uh, even if you have some house helps, they can, they can, they can, <laughs> they can be part of this. They can, they can share in the glory of salvation. Okay, now. Let's look at this from verse 19. Let me try and put the cursor there so you can see it's at the very end. Then I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and their children after them. Salvation is for you and your children. Hmm? It's a promise that God has made. Huh? Let me let me even put it this way. <laughs> it is sometimes to a thousand generations of those who love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is the, the the mercy of God. The way it's expressed is very very lavish and very very expansive. Okay, it's very lavish and very expansive. So let, let me let me let me go to uh who was I asking? Okay, if it was Festus I was asking. Let me let me let me jump to Mr. Delike. Mr. Delike, how can how can you know who Jesus is? I mean, how can a man know Jesus? The only way is when Jesus, Jesus himself has to reveal himself to the man. Jesus, so has no you, Jesus, has, Jesus is the one that will reveal himself to the man, for the man to know Jesus. Or else... Uh, <laughs> not, not strictly correct. Not, not, not strictly uh. correct. Yeah, no, no. Uh, let me... Or through his words. <laughs> it, can be, it, can, it can be through his words. Through his words. Yeah. Relax, relax, relax. This is not... Uh, this is not a <laughs> This is you get you get very kind of <laughs> answer that you always like to give. Uh, is Uzioma with us or she's just listening? If you don't answer, I will say you are just listening. Okay, I, I, I assume I, I assume you are, you are just listening. Um, Bege, how can a man know Jesus?
How can a man know Jesus? Yes. I think... Um, How did they begin with Jesus? This is, where, this is really where I started. I'll come back to you again. <laughs> uh, by, by Jesus revealing himself to begin true. Um, not not true. Not true. Not true. Not true. Not true. Okay. Um, Jesus, by... strictly speaking, does not reveal himself to begin. Ah, uh, who should I try now? Okay, one day I want to go. How can a man know Jesus? From the word of God. <laughs> Over the bar. Completely. <laughs> okay, so let's let, let's let's deal with this quickly, okay? Now, Jesus can only be known to somebody. If God the Father reveals Jesus to him, all right, Jesus does not reveal himself, okay? Remember, this, we know in scripture we just said, okay? No man can come to me except what? Except the Father draws the person. So initiative is from God the Father. Uh, let's look at um, an example quickly. from the scriptures. Matthew 16. Jesus asked them, you know, who do men say that I am? And Peter said, you are, you are the Christ, the son of, you know, and Jesus answered and said, blessed are you, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father, okay, it is God that reveals Jesus to men. Okay, the father re reveals the son. So we can't know Jesus, right? From reading the Bible. I read the Bible, I didn't know him now. <laughs> so I mean I'm a <laughs> I'm a very good, I'm a very a very good person to able to able present this case. Huh? I I read the Bible. I did. I did. I read the Bible. I said, no. Let me leave this Jesus alone. I don't. I don't want to have anything to do with him. Doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. Now you can't unless God uh, decides that He wants you to know who Jesus is. Let's look at another principle. Okay, about how to know Jesus. Again, from the Scriptures. Other scriptures, uh, Romans 10 20, and it's quoting Isaiah I was found by those who did not seek me, I was made manifest by those who did not ask for me. Now, man, okay, cannot find God or even Jesus, <laughs> it's not possible. Okay, when we try to find God. We were worshipping the sun. We were worshipping the moon. We were worshipping the host of heaven. We were worshipping, you know, I mean, look, I was I was talking yesterday that I met a man who asked me, how many gods do you have? An Indian man. Okay. Now, in India, they are, <laughs> India has a, over a billion people. There must be like a billion gods in India. There's a god for everything. <laughs> There's a god of, of, of everything. Uh, what happened? Because man was looking for God. Mm -hmm. It's impossible for man to find God. God has to find us. Okay? So, you know, I mean, <laughs> Jesus had to be in the end. The Father sent Jesus. Still, the initiative was the Father's. He sent Jesus to us. Okay? So that Jesus could reveal the Father to us. Okay, and in revealing the Father, of course, he will reveal himself because, you know, he and the Father, they are one. So, Jesus can only be known by revelation. Uh, Jesus is revealed to men. Otherwise, they can't know him. I mean, he even came down to earth. 
<laughs> but you know, I mean, the Bible says that he sat down to eat with some people after he resurrected. They didn't, they didn't see him. He walked, he walked for hours with them on the road to Emmaus. They invited him to dinner. He sat down with them and had dinner. Huh? Uh, and they didn't even they said they didn't see him. Okay, because he is by revelation. Okay, so people say he's Elijah. So people say he's one prophet. Let me say he's this, etc. You know, but by the time Peter says you are the Christ, he said, "My Father has revealed it to you." That's the only way you could have known. Huh? so the expression that is popular which is that we gave our life to Christ. It's a misnomer. You gave your life to Christ. You can't, you can't, even, you, you, you can't even know him. Huh? You can spend your life looking for him. You won't find him. Okay? Unless he wants you to find him. You can't. That's why I said, I'm found by those who did not look for me. So that you will know that it is all from beginning to end. And this is this is a principle that I'm begging you, huh? because you will not progress with God unless you understand this principle. Everything is God, because if you if you if you understand the principle, you don't have to worry about anything, because you are in good with God, because you are in the secret place of the Father. So why would anybody? There's nothing they can do for you. There's nothing they can do to you, huh? Because God is God and He is the only one. There is no other God. There is no competition. Nobody. Huh? So, if if God is for you, you know, why do you you don't have to worry about anything again. Huh? He will keep in perfect peace the man whose heart is fixed on Him because He is God. So, he who comes to God must believe that He is real. And that's why we really, what I want us to look at today is the reality of God. Uh, the reality of God, because God is real. Okay? God is real. So, you know, I mean, the next question I, I had is that, okay, can you persuade a man? All right? You know, you are, you are, you are, um, um, Thomas the Evangelist or, or Festus the Evangelist or Totu the Evangelist, can you persuade a man to follow Jesus? Huh? Let me ask the question to begin because, you know, I mean, he, he was on this thread from the beginning. Begay, can you persuade a man to follow Jesus? No, you can't. Um, <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> no, you can't. And it was it was the reason why I <laughs> I I really could not tell you that oh at this point in my life I give my life to Christ or I I I, I answered an altar call because to be honest but you know but so it, many... that, that is possible because he can draw it it can be that you answer because he drew you at that time so you know the, 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 yes that, that phenomenon that's if know. god is drawing but for me at that time i was following people so i was going to tell you it wasn't like i had i didn't go out for altar calls i was going out for so many altar calls but it wasn't really i was you know when people everybody stands up and you know goes forward and you just follow <laughs> so, <laughs> so it it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't like a, you know I I went and gave my life. So it could also be the same thing. You can tell somebody, oh, I accept Christ. The guy will say, okay, I've accepted, so that you get away. You have not you have not really brought him to Christ. So until God Himself draws him, man man can really not. You cannot influence anybody. To come but to then don't, don't, don't you do evangelism yeah but we're just um we're just sowing the seed <laughs> like the like the bible say you just sow the seed and the father will come and water <laughs> okay yeah. I, I think i think it was paul that says uh, uh somebody planted somebody you know and god gave the increases <laughs> yes 
So we'll just, just, we'll just that, flat. So we determine whether the thing will grow or not. <laughs> True. Okay, Mr. Samukwa. Uh, just, um, sorry, Doctor, please. Can you please uh, educate us how we can now fit in Jeremiah 29, 13 into this realization now? You Jeremiah, know. Let, let, let's, let's open it so that we can see what you have. Jeremiah what? Jeremiah 29, 13. Jeremiah 29, 13. There is no Jeremiah 29, 13. Uh, let me try again. Jeremiah 29, 13. No, something is wrong here. Let me take another route to open this. Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen. Okay, it says, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Okay. <laughs> if we can understand that, I think we've made a very massive discovery. Okay. <laughs> the fact is that, okay, the initiative of all this is God's. Uh, you can't search for you, a, a man cannot search for God with all his heart unless God <laughs> who wants him to. First of all, I, I thought you were going to go to Jeremiah 33. We said, I will give you the new a new heart. That, that heart is the heart that you can use to search for God and find him. So, you know, I mean, first of all, okay, the natural man cannot even can can never find God. Because he has a heart that is not interested. So he is not going to seek God. He's not going to look for God. So anything that you see that has human initiative in it is a cause for prayer. I don't know if you understand what I'm telling you now. Please explain further. Okay, because you see, God will never tell you to do what you can do. Okay. All right? So, if he tells you to do something, he expects you to come back to him and say, I can't do it. I need you to help me to do it. Okay? Because... Without me, says Jesus, you can do nothing. So you can't seek God and find him because you decided to do it. No. You will go to God and you will pray to God and say, God, I need you to give me the heart to find, to, to, to want to seek, to, 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 to want you, to seek you. I, I want you to, you know, if God tells you, go and bring that bucket. Don't be in a hurry to go. Uh, Tell him that okay, uh, you know, but we are going to get Abby <laughs> so that you know I can't carry any bucket. Uh, okay, I can do all things if you help me. Mm. I can do nothing without your help. So everything the help comes from God, that God may be preeminent in all things. Uh, so you are not going to achieve. Anything. Yourself. Not by power or by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Everything okay. is going to come by the spirit of the Lord. Yeah, mm -hmm. This makes sense. This makes sense. Yes. Everything, the glory is going to be to the Lord. It's God that helped you to do it. Mm -hmm. 
it's God that help you to do it. Pastors uh, 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 and I, we are going to somewhere tomorrow. <laughs> you know, I said, I said, what time would you go? I said, 12, 12 o'clock. I said, okay, we'll go at 12 o'clock. Immediately I wrote it, I, I, I had to write back to him. I said, by the grace of God. <laughs> mm -hmm. sent, sent him another text immediately. He said, you know, Jesus, we can only go tomorrow if God helps us. Huh? Because if God says, we are not seeing tomorrow, that's it. Where are we going at 12 o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. It makes, it makes a whole lot of sense. My, in it's fact, not... I just remember my experience confirms that. <laughs> what is the experience? Remember, remember when I, I remember when I told you that I, I, I asked God for something and he responded with two words. He said, sell bread. And I, and I said, wow, this is fantastic, wonderful. It, 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 it answers all the uh, um all the uh, factors I put in. I wanted this and I wanted it like this and like it's that. Time and like to that. pray. It's time to pray. What is it? You sell bread. It's time to pray. <laughs> he told me, sell bread. And I foolishly jumped it's into time it to without, pray. Going, without going back to go ask him how and when well, and where and all that. And well, because Sam, by, the, by the time he told you, sell bread, some, some, yeah, yeah, people have had. <laughs> I can't have given you to go to sell bread. So <laughs> they are going to waylay you on the way. Some demons, <laughs> some principalities, some powers. We say, no way, that bread is not going to happen. Ah, it's not, it's not ah, going to happen. So ah, you need you need a host of heaven. Huh? Yes, I, you need yes, the so. host of heaven to to you know that with the host of heaven, of course, you will sell that bread now. Yes, <laughs> uh, you you that, remember the experience? You remember the experience? I remember now. I guess now <laughs> we get we get to the place now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, it's good. We, we came to the place. Uh, let's let's look at let's look at uh, scripture. First Corinthians. Um, well, two scriptures really. Uh, let's look at this one first. First Corinthians two four. It says, my, my speech and my preaching were not with the persuasive words of, of human wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. But it's the next verse that, 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 that's my destination. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Huh? That's why I've, I've, I've I, I, I pose the question, can you persuade men? No, you can't. The, 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 the persuasion will come in the wisdom of men. Mm -mm -mm. But they can only really receive it by the power of God. Okay? It is the power of God that he is going to bring them to receive it. Huh? If the power of God is not there, they will not receive it. They cannot receive it, you know. I mean, it, it, it some of these things uh, takes takes one a long time to 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 come to the realization. Uh, let's look at one that used to baffle me, okay, until I understood what what the message was, mm -hmm. so that it won't take you long. Now, some of these things that took me long, you know, you it won't take you guys long at all. Matthew nine nine. As Jesus passed on from there. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. I looked at this scripture and said, hey, what's going on here? He just saw a man and he said, follow me. And the man, you understand? That was the end of it. The man just packed up everything and decided to follow Jesus. <laughs> you know, huh? Okay, what was happening? He didn't tell him. Follow me because this will happen, this will happen, so and so, that and that, this is that. No, 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 no. Just follow me. Now, the follow me itself. Uh, the Bible says, in the day of your power, your people shall be willing. The follow me had power in it. It was the power of God that propelled that man. That he's not thinking of anything. Huh? Okay. And I say, you know, by the grace of God, I can, <laughs> I can preach this because huh, 
I answered an altar call. And I'm telling you that I never answered that altar call. I didn't. I didn't. Something picked me up, literally from my chair, and dragged me I, with my crutches, bam, 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 to, to, to that place. Huh? So, <laughs> you know, Jesus took my life. I never gave my life to him. I didn't give my life to Jesus. He took it. He took it by his own power. By his power. And so, you know, there are some people that he will say, you know, I mean, follow, and then they, 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 they will say that, uh, uh, me, I want to go and bury my, my father first. You, know? you understand? Those ones, they are not chosen. <laughs> you understand? The power is not working in them. Uh, let me go and do something first. <laughs> Leave those ones alone. They are not... Mm -hmm. <laughs> the power is not working in them. Mm -hmm. When the power is working, okay, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. That's it. That's the end of your fishing job. Huh? Because the logical thing, by the time Peter caught such a big haul, is for him to say, look, let us form a company. You understand? Lord Jesus, you can even get you can get eighty percent of the shares and give us twenty. We are, we, 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 we will still we will still make a fortune. We will be millionaires. Not that I will now stop fishing fish. I will not be fishing man. No, but you know if he has called you, that's it. That's it. You you you, you are just going to follow. Uh, you are just going to follow because it is it is the power of God that is operating. And so I asked the question, and who am I going to ask, Mr. Adeleke? I said then, you know, so what is the point of preaching the gospel? Hmm? Mr. Adeleke, what is the point of preaching the gospel? I think the point is obedience. Well, the point is obedience. When God instructs us to do X, Y, Z, for us to answer and obey, I think one that's one of the points. It's obedience. That's the only point. Are you trying to? There are other. There are other ones. Let me let me just uh, let me think about it, sir. I will come back. The, 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 the scripture where Paul was saying, "How can they? How can they uh, believe unless somebody preaches to them? How can they?" Uh, 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 Mr. Olawande, what is the point of? Preaching the gospel. Is Mr. Alawande with us? Now well, he has he has disappeared. Okay, first us. Festus, can you hear me? Stop. Yeah, I can hear you, sir. What is the point of preaching the gospel? Is um, it just talks about um, Christ? That is all. It's not. Uh... It's just a what? It's just talked about Christ. Because um yes, no. what is the point of talking about him? Just for you, just for them to know him. It's not that you, you the want commission to force... now. Go into all, all the world and preach the gospel. Mm. Why is he so asking us he... to go to go to all the world and preach the gospel? Just, just, just spread the words. Talked about him, that is all. He will do the rest. Because most often, uh, very difficult to just go uh, and, and talk about him. Just go and preach. Most of the time, we just go and then we're saying things 
pertaining to us. We are not preaching about the good news, saying something different. Or Have you preached the gospel go... to someone before? Yes. Did they did they accept Jesus? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, <laughs> so what was the point of your preaching the gospel to that person? And uh, I, 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 um, for me, I was thinking at least, but I was able to talk to someone because they were not ready. They were just they are hungry, I and mean, me, I'm preaching God. What kind of what is the difference between preaching God and someone that is hungry? <laughs> <laughs> the person was looking for food, not not for God. Yeah, they were not looking for God at that particular time. They were looking for food. But uh, to me, I feel that uh, at that particular time, they would not. But there is some certain things to say that they will keep, we will keep reoccurring to them. That God will use to draw them closer to him. Not, not me, not, uh, not anybody at all. Pastors, we, we, we gave people food for seven, eight, nine years. Launch our fellowship mm. twi twi twice <laughs> twice a week. Because they find they, they come to eat meat pie, come to drink coke. Huh? When we stop <laughs> giving the meat pie and the coke, they, <laughs> they didn't come back. <laughs> <Run away. laughs> they didn't come back. Oh, you know, they dropped from 200 to 20. Jesus. I'm telling you. <laughs> we were getting 200 people on Tuesday, 200 people on, on, on Thursday. Uh, by the time I said, okay, look, what we do is that because you, uh, I discovered that some people come late. Okay? Because they know that the meat pies, they come at the end. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> they come in time for the meat pie, not for the any message or whatever it is. So I said, okay, uh, after 30 minutes, because it was just one hour lunch after the after 30 minutes, we close the door. So nobody can come in again. They start banging on the door outside. <laughs> they start banging, start banging on the glass. <laughs> uh -huh. they're, they're only for the food. So yes, you know, Jesus says, you know, <laughs> don't labor, don't labor. Huh? What did those young say? The meat pie was spiritual. Okay. <laughs> said, Jesus said, don't labor for the food that perishes. <laughs> huh? So we decided, like, look, when they followed Jesus, they took shipping. They followed him across the, the river. Huh? He, he 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 didn't give them any. He didn't multiply any loaves again. So he said, "Let's leave this pit pie out. People stop coming up. They stop coming. Hmm. Which is which was just uh, was 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 uh, was. They were just enjoying their food. They were not hearing the word at all. At all. Hmm. At all. First of all, I want to show you a scripture. I want to see how you react to it. Acts 13, 48. Now, when the Gentiles had this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed. Huh? I'm going to read it again. So you see, last of all, you said, as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed. What does this tell you, uh, uh, Festus? Hmm. In this passage, they preach the gospel. Okay? Right? Hmm. But it yes. says, as many as have been appointed to eternal life believed. What does this tell you? It's saying that as many as have been God has chosen, they believe. Yes, what is the implication of the of the scripture? 
Mm, that, that shows that song. Uh, not it's not um uh, by playing out. It's not by now saying that you wants to go and preach to who you want um you want to convert one hundred and fifty million people. It's not by your preaching, but because God has chosen them. They just believe. So you get you get preachers saying this that you know yeah I have a covenant with God that a million people I'm going to bring five million people to Christ I'm going to bring five million people to Christ. Mr. Mm -hmm. Yandang, what do you think? What do you make of that scripture? Acts thirteen forty. As many as had been ordained to eternal life believed. As many that has been <laughs> appointed. Appointed. It can be ordained, it can be appointed. Let's go back to it. It says appointed, but you know. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life, believed. Mm. Okay. My, my question would be who appointed? I want to believe it was God that appointed them to eternal life. And if God has appointed you to internal life, you must believe because he will help you to believe. That's my interpretation. Yes, but it also means, Bege, hmm. that there were quite a few people there that did not believe. And that the reason they didn't believe is because they had not been appointed to eternal life. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I was when you mentioned, when you said that I was going to ask that you know if they were appointed because if they have been appointed, there's no way they would not believe. In which case, it is God that appoints, and He doesn't appoint everybody. Yes. Correct. Okay, so you know again we're back to this equation that it is just it is God, it is God, it is God from beginning mm. uh, to the end yeah. to the end. Uh, what is that song, uh, uh, Nathaniel? You are God from beginning to the end. I, mean, I always said, there is no mm -hmm. cause for argument. <laughs> you yeah. are God all by <laughs> yourself. Uh, he is the one. I mean, you know, so, uh, but, you know, somehow he wants us to participate in this process. But we should not over-exaggerate our, <laughs> our participation. <laughs> it's all about daddy. It's all about yeah. him. It's all about him. Don't, don't, don't let it get to your head. Don't be you know, don't now start competing with, with, with God for his glory. No, he doesn't give his glory to another. He doesn't give his glory to graven images. Yeah. Mr. Adelike, your hand is up. Yes, I wanted to. I wanted to ask the question. The the the, the, the who are you? Who do you want to ask the question to? Yeah, not me. Uh, ask okay, it to, to everybody. <laughs> to everybody. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, these people that are uh, uh, doing their own preaching and they are increasing their member every every month, every week, and they said they want to fill up the kingdom of God with uh, with God's children. And they, are God, they, they are not they, they, the kingdom of the pastors. If you read my book, uh, so, as a so, kingdom of bro. pastors. <laughs> 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 yeah, they are packing people into their own kingdom. <laughs> it's just, it's just uh, okay. There, there's another one that I even heard. They said the the redeemed pastor, the one in the uh, city of David, that they put, they, they transfer him to another parish, and the man just resigned. And I said, can somebody resign from uh, God's work? When you are doing God's work, you are a when did he resign? Yeah, I didn't hear that he resigned, though. It's in over the news. It's over the news for all, all over. It's a, well, re recently or some time ago? Recently, about two, three days ago. Two days, two days ago, resigned. And well, said, the, is that the to... city of David Pastor has resigned? Uh, we say he doesn't want to go to where they posted him to. So he resigned. You know, yes, so... When he, uh, when he decided to resign. Uh, I beg your you know, so, He was suspended. Uh, okay. He was suspended. Yes, for three months. 
Why did they suspend him? And he, you know, you know, they want to transfer him. Not go anywhere. You know, they, they build all the things, everything. Don't yeah, but they can't transfer him. Ah. They can transfer him. Ah. They can't. They brought him there now. They were they can't trans- brought him there. They can't transfer him. <laughs> you guys don't understand. They can't transfer him. If he if he if he resigns, it's because he is fed up. They can't transfer him. They are bought, they have bought the system a long time before. Let me tell you what happened. Uh, let's digress for a minute. You see, there was in Medim, okay, there was what is called a papa parish. A papa parish was by um um Tony Rapu was the pastor of a papa parish. A papa parish is the one yeah. that built redeem, not a deboye. Huh? A papa parish planted, planted parishes all over the world. Okay? So they became they became afraid that a papa was getting too powerful and too big so that he doesn't do what happened to um, um, this other pastor that is in Ikeja. What's his name now? Bakari. Bakari, Bakari was, was in Redeem and then he broke up to create um, his own district. So they decided that they will split a papa. Okay, I mean this is this is this is just politics now. Uh, power play. They said they will split a papa so that you know. So when they split a papa, the wrong papa papa came and landed in city of David. And when they landed in city of David, okay, it was it was in rebellion. They came that you can't touch us again. We aren't going anywhere. You can't move us anywhere. Okay? Now, the, the man that was there then died. He fell sick and died. They now put this guy there. He could have refused. There's nothing they could do to him. Who put him there? Pardon? I said who put him this one there. The, the, it doesn't uh... matter who it doesn't matter who put him there. They can refuse to go. But if it he is the airport, the redeem airport that put him there, they, he, are, they can, can, he refuse. can refuse to go because he is the one that built this place. Uh, that's the, that's the logic that they use. He is the one, and when he, when he's, he's built, he's built up, you know. Now, what happened to him? Okay, what 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 wasn't this case was that a big financier of the church died. This man that died in a plane crash. Yes, we go. Yes. And then he was then celebrating his wife's birthday. And it was lavish, etc. And it became a scandal. They said, this man has just died and you are celebrating birthday. So that was what they used to, to, to corner him that, you know, he, he brought the name of the church into disrepute, etc. He could have refused. I'm surprised that he even wow. agreed. Maybe he's tired. We just had that he resigned. That's what we heard. That must be that must be a lot a lot more behind it. A lot. It's true, sure. Yeah. So me, I was just I was just wondering that is it possible to resign from God's work? <laughs> 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 they just wake up one morning and tell God, I'm not doing it again. I'm resigning. <laughs> You, you can resign now. You well, can't, not go well, you. Actually, you can't, actually, you can't, you can't resign. You can resign now. Yeah. You can resign from man, but you can't resign from God. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. say, I won't do it again. Jeremiah said that if he says he will preach again, there will be, there will be fire in his in his, in his boat. He will not he will not be able to sleep at night. There's no way you can't. Where are you going to go to? What, what's going to happen to you? Is Thomas is Thomas with us now? Oh, you are still on the bike. Uh, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm home, sir. Okay, you are home. Well, thank God. <laughs> you are home. Safe, safe and sound. <laughs> and so thank we you, can sir. talk yes. now. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, Thomas, how, how can you tell that God exists? Yeah. Okay. Well, for me, the only way I have been able to tell is by the personal experiences that I have, uh, experience, have encountered in my life. 
what are these what are these personal experiences okay can, you, so, can the knowledge of god come from personal experiences yes the knowledge of god can come from personal experiences okay give me an example of a personal experience that will bring the knowledge of god well for me uh one there was a time this time um when I was young, I had several encounters, but I'm going to speak on one. And that, that particular one was this day I was sleeping. And then while I was sleeping, an angel came down in my dream. from, And then a cloud came with the angel. And in that dream, I could, I could see that the angel was standing. It, it, it was not a winged creature, but it was just a normal person, but dressed in white. A tall, a tall man dressed in white. And then there was a cloud above him. They both came together. And then the, he opened the paper and it, 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 that paper, he read out my name in full. And Obama Thomas said, I said, presence. Now ask me, what is the old duty of man? And then I said to him, the old duty of man is to serve God. I responded according to Ecclesiastes. And then he said, are you doing it? I said no. And then I was hit. He hit me. He slapped me. And I, I can say that that slap, the pain is in that dream, lasted for over 30 minutes in that dream. I was wailing, shouting, begging, wailing, shouting. And it was a painful experience. Then I, he was about to hit me again. How old were you? And his voice. I cannot say I was 15 then. Hmm. I don't think I was up to 15. Maybe okay. if I was 15, I, I was not 20. So I, I could not remember the precise date, but this happened around um, 2000. Yeah, precise, precise, precise date doesn't matter. Yes. It doesn't add anything it around, to the Yeah, it was, it was around 2001, 2002, 2003. I, I guess it should be around 2002, 2003. And so when, that, when the angel wanted to hit me again, then a voice spoke from the cloud. In that dream, I could tell that God was in the cloud. That was why the cloud did, because the angel had come with the cloud. And then a voice spoke. He said, it's enough. I have forgiven him. And then when that voice spoke, he didn't well, hit Did me. the angel come I to spoke. beat you? Yes. If, when, I, when he asked me that question, he said, what's the whole duty of man? I said, it's to serve God. He said, are you doing it? I said, no. And then I was hit. He slapped me. He slapped <laughs> my face. And... <laughs> wow. Yes, and uh, when I woke up, when I finally woke up, the pain was like someone puts a pipe through my ears. Like, like somebody ran an iron rod from the, the first ear to the one, one side of the ear to the other. So that pain was so excruciating, I had to explain to my mom, my stepdad at the time, at that time. And that pain lasted for about a long time. I know how that pain left me. That pain left when I got angry one day. I said, are you a wicked God? Why have you come to afflict me with pains in my ears? Because it was that experience that started that pain. And from that day, I never had I felt that pain again. The moment I expressed that anger, several years after, because even while I was, that pain kept on reminding me of certain things that when I go to certain places, my ears will become a problem. And when I leave, my ears will open. One experience was I had gone to one time like that. I had gone to, uh, even though the, my, my, my thinking has changed now, but then I had gone to one club to play. And then when I went to that club, which time I went to that club, my ear would go block. And when I leave there, my ear will open. I'll go there, I'll be struggling to hear. And when I leave there, my ear will open. One one day, I had gone there and I was coming straight to church. And then, while the worship service started, my ear opened. And then when you came up, the first thing you said was somebody God said he was going to open a deaf ear today. And it was, I, I gave that testimony because the experience for me was like my ear just went bang opened and then you came up to say that was the first thing that came out of your mouth so not just that i had experienced god in that revelation but i had also experienced god in practical physical 
example because even that pain moved from the dream. But Thomas, the Thomas, 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 we've been with you for years. You never told us this thing before. I did. So why have you been I hiding did. this thing? I never had this one before. Huh? I, 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 I did before. say. Dr. have you had this one story before? I have not, too. I have not. <laughs> he's my first I've not, I've not had to, he, This man, he, he has these revelations and he's not sharing it. He's just <laughs> keeping <laughs> it in his pocket. Yeah, <laughs> this is huh? <laughs> He's just hiding it from everybody. Mm. Mm. So, you, have to, you, you, have, you have to share yeah. it. It's very it's important. To mm -hmm. This is just one, one amongst others. And then give when us I another one, one, though. Give us another one. This one is our, I, I thought it was the pastors that had all these fantastic uh, <laughs> testimonies. Okay, okay. I didn't know you had you okay, another person so. in the, the place. This healing wins people. You, you healing people, you are, you are special people. Oh, yeah, this, I, we are listening. There was a time I, I joined healing wings. At the time I started to join healing wings, I. I when I came, I was struggling with messages. Though I had, I had already something has been triggering in me, like something is wrong in the postal system. The kind of message they preach, because there yeah, had been in a church where if you don't have money to contribute to the building of the um, uh, the church, I mean you you are of course not looked upon. You you are, you are treated like man. It's only the, the of course you know how this thing run. Only the people that have money in some churches. That they, you know, give uh, accolades to or one of those recognition or whatever value. So now, the the the, the, the pastor would always preach: if you are not a tight payer, if you come to this church and ask for help, we won't help you. We will first of all go for the tight cards, <laughs> check your name, and check your record. Wow! And if you are not a regular tighter, we are not going to help you. And it was in this church I learned that you don't bring your tithe, you don't give your tithe to the beggar, except you'll be a debtor. So as irregular as I was with my tithe, even though I was religious about it, but sometimes I was not I was not doing it. I had that feeling of guilt of being a debtor, owing God, and I was looking for how to restitute. But then one day, I had left there, I started with healing wings, and then the first salary that you paid me, I remember it was uh, 40000 the very first salary. I removed the 4000 put it in, the, in an envelope. I brought it to church. While I was on my way, I, 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 I got to really, and I, there's this woman that got on the bus, and then when this woman got on the bus, not because she was modestly dressed, but because the spirit's of God in me, beard witness that this man was a child of God. I could sense, I could feel it. But now she sat down, and when she sat down, she the, the conductor got to her, her side and said, "Where is your money?" Then she she said she didn't have the money. And then the conductor got angry. Said, "Why did you tell me?" Then she said, "If I told you, you wouldn't have allowed me to get on this bus." And it was a bit of a struggle, but there was nothing the conductor could do at that time because they had gone far away from where he had picked her from. So, why we were we, 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 why we inside that bus? I heard it clearly. Give this woman this envelope. The tithe that I was bringing to church, to Ellen Wings. First salary. <laughs> but then, <laughs> because I was in, I, I've been in, indoctrinated that you'll be a debtor if you give your tithe to beggar mm -hmm. or to the needy. You must bring it to church, else you are a debtor. So, now, I wouldn't listen. This thing kept on. So now, what happened was that I was sitting at the last seat, and this woman was sitting somewhere at the middle. Then this woman got down before me. And, Madam, you had, you had, you've gone down from the bus. You were supposed to keep going to where you were going. But this woman stood and turned back and looked, at things, and looked inside the bus. And who was she looking at? It was me. I was coming down. Like, we looked at each other. And she stood there. And then I came down. I said, which kind of wahala be this? I, I stood, I turned back, I looked at her, and then she left. So when I came to church that day, I, I excitedly dropped the tithe because I didn't want to be a, a debtor, even though I was not a consistent tithe payer because there were times I, could, I wouldn't pay. Now, I put that money. And that day, the message ended with, God is not interested in your tithe. It was a Monday. That was like 
for me, I, I, my problem began. I said, God, what? What did I just do? You know, you know, I had to tell you this after several years after, before you told me, forgive yourself, before I had peace. Because I heard God clearly, give this woman this money. And I refused. And then the woman got down, turned back and looked at me. And I refused. And then that was when I began to, it was alien wings. Now, why did I say this? It, I, I'm saying this because in my dream one day, one of the members of the church had just left to join Ealing Wings. We were arguing with the scripture, and the guy put pepper into my eyes in that dream. But you were standing right beside there, and the spirit spoke in that dream, said, listen to this man. He pointed to you. So that was because I was already having struggles with the message I was hearing, but until I heard it in that dream, when the other guy that represented the church had just left, and you were standing on by the side, you, you wouldn't say anything. You just stood there. And then the spirit said, listen to this man, which was you, what pointed to you. So that was one. That was another experience for me. That I so, so I tell people I don't believe in God. And sometimes I don't care to explain to them because they, uh, they, 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 they accept the ask. Because why would I say I don't believe in God? I don't believe in God. If I believe in God, it means that I don't know God. I have moved from the state of believing to knowledge. So belief is just a way of accepting what you don't Thing to understand what you don't think it is that's why sometimes you say i believe it will work but when you when you know it works you say i know it works Go and try it oh well, so i i moved away from belief to knowledge and one more thing let me just share this last one this last one now what happened was that recently or maybe like about three four years ago i was praying i don't know i can't remember maybe i was praying that night but i slept off while i was sleeping i found myself in the dream and then I saw a circle. And the, 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 the circle was in the sky. And this circle had different kinds of logos, different kinds of things, different kinds of logos. And this logo, for me, they represented different kinds of religions. Even the, the, the part of the things we see on TV, the, the, on TV, I saw different kinds of logos on that. Thing. They formed a big circle. And then when they formed the big circle, I just discovered that on the at the end of the circle there is a golden throne, a golden chair, and on this golden chair it was a golden calf, a gold uh, not not a calf like a golden healthy lion, life a living lion that was shaking his head like was way, way I mean it was like how the lion would I mean embody his his energy. He was I was seeing that expression. And I shouted, my friend was somewhere, I mean, like he was in the, in the toilet. I shouted, Matthew, 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 I've seen the lion, I've seen the lion. This lion was so mighty, was so big, golden lion sitting on the golden throne. I brought out my phone in that dream. I said, I need to snap. The moment I took out my phone to snap, my phone went blank. It didn't, like, it was not a battery issue. The phone went dead, blank and dead. And then I woke up. And when I woke up, the name came to my mind, Elion. I, I said, whoever, whoever said is the lion of the tribe of Judah, it was not by just saying, it was the revelational knowledge. So, and then I did, a name came to my mind, Elion, and I, because of that revelation. And when I went to Google, I saw that name, Elion. The, and I mean, from that, that was the, 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 the beginning of me hearing that name, Elion. Elion never occurred to me. But after that revelation, I did that name just say, I said, ah, no, Elion Ayuda. I said, Elion Ayuda. But then when I went to, I, I, I started with Elion the Judah. Somehow, somehow, I kept meditating on it and it changed to Elion Ayuda. And then when I went to the Google to check for Elion, I then saw different spellings of Elion, all representing Christ, all standing for Christ. So these are revelations that I've had, even though in this quest for God, a lot of things have changed when it has to do with the scriptures and understanding the Bible. There are a lot of questions I have, but that God does not exist. I know that God is real. Wow. Ah, I thank God for your life. <laughs> this is fantastic. This is fantastic. Oh, God is wonderful. This is fantastic. Uh, um, Samu Kwa, we're talking, you know, yes. um, uh, let me show you a scripture. Talking, how do you how do you know God exists? 
um, let's look at some scriptures. Um, Romans 1.20 For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now, can you identify some of those things that from the creation of the world are clearly seen of the attributes of God that are that can be understood from the things that are made. Uh, well, for example, <clears throat> as the as the French would say, for example, he is he is life, and uh, for example, it's a very simple thing. You look at trees; the trees are living, uh, 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 are living uh, um, uh, uh, properties that, if without without life, some kind of life in that. The, the tree cannot exist. It cannot. Uh, it cannot grow. Cannot uh, produce anything, and so there is some life, some kind of life in a tree, which is something that we just see in nature. We, you know, it, we look at. Wonderful. We look at rain. We look at clouds. One minute we are looking up everywhere. The, the the sky looks blue, and so on. Then in another moment we see the clouds turn to a different color. Sometimes it turn to gray. And then we see water coming down from the sky. You know, there is no which human being turned on tap somewhere. So some of these things, we just see it. We know that, ah, no, 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 no. This is beyond a human being's control. There is nothing any human being can uh, um, uh, has uh, contributed to this. When we look around, we see, for example, other forms of life in animals we look at you know um the we look at water water is 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 in the ocean how do we how does the water know that this is when you are at at the beach you know the waves go out and then come to the shore and stop there then go back in come back to the shore so how who, how does the water know that this is where it should stop how does it know that you know you cannot go beyond this point, you know? And <clears throat> who who determines it? Where there is water, where there is no water, you know? So there are things that we see in <clears throat> in life, you know. We we see in life. You see, you, okay, you see flat land somewhere. Then somewhere you see something, a hill, a mountain. How did it come to be? Like some huge rock just grow out from the ground, or did you see that somebody uh, everything was up there, and somebody now used a shovel to 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 carve out some of the mountains and then uh, left ordinary plain ground. You so when you see the different the topography of the of the earth, the land rising, falling here and there. How who, how did it come to be? The sun in the daytime, the moon in the in the in the nighttime, when we see all these things, the, the heat from the sun, and you, you sometimes you somehow know that the sun is alive. You know, you know yes. that if we're if we are if we're a little nearer to the sun, you we will, will not up. fry. We will fry. If we're a little further away, we will freeze. Please. So we have to be. We have to be in a in a where we you know. where we are. So yes. How who, who calculated it? How? Some so some of these things are really mind boggling, which is why you know when you start hearing people talking of Darwin theory, you just you just laugh and know that these ones are talking nonsense, you know. So there are they, so many they, things they, they call this in intelligent design. Yes, you know. That's, if if you see if you see a car, okay. You open the bonnet. Uh, you know somebody designed this car. Yes. So that you know this is where the water will be. The petrol is going to be here. This is where exactly. the plug will be. You know and all that. Uh, 
even yeah. even even Sam himself is fearfully and wonderfully designed. <laughs> exactly. How can, how, how, which car has anybody ever seen that just came together and made itself from <laughs> from uh, um, different different uh, random? It, 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 a, it a, there was a big bang and the car came together and became came a together. <laughs> so, ordinary, so if an ordinary car requires somebody to design it and bring it into existence, how can the person who admits that that is so be so daft as to uh, imagine that the massive things we see in in nature, in you know, in the universe, that they just happen randomly? You know, some some of these things are, are, are ridiculous. So. <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, let me go back to begin. Uh, and Dang. Look at this scripture. We are talking about the existence of God. Um. Sometimes this thing blocks me. Okay. I'm looking for. Psalm 19. Yes. This scripture, because it says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech. Night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speak nor language where the voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through the earth and their words to the end of the world. The Living Bible is a better translation for this. Let's see the Living Bible before I give it to begin. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. Uh, gave, how, how do the heavens proclaim the glory of God? Um, true rainfall. <laughs> uh, I think... I think you know two reforms. Ah, you, know that. <laughs> you have left the obvious and you have gone to the more obscure. Um, so I well, there are there are there are many ways. Now I, I just said two reinforce because of my personal experience this this period. Um you know, like the testimony I give when we had by mom's birthday. It was obvious that there was not going to be any rain because I actually checked the weather forecast. And then in the middle of it, you know, the heaven was giving glory to God and there had to be a sign. You know, and the the wind came, little showers came, you know, even though we knew it was not going to rain, but it was a sign for me. And I held on to that very strongly. Um the heavens, who are the people in the heavens? They are still the children of God, God's children, those that have gone there. Again, from... again, you are, we are, we are, we are, we are, <laughs> you are ignoring the, the trees for the, I don't know, I don't know what you know. The stars. The stars. <laughs> yeah. The heavens. <laughs> There are billions and billions of stars in the heavens. Go and look at them at night in Ireland, where you are. Are you in Dublin? Yeah, I'm in Dublin. Yes. The heavens, mm. the stars, the stars, when you see the stars. Huh? I didn't know that, mm. you know, I mean, there are billions, there are billions of galaxies and billions and billions of stars. And I mean, you know, who created this once? Why are they not clashing? Why are they not knocking heads? Why, are they, you know, I mean, it's mm. just uh, <laughs> it 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 is it is just it is just too much. It True. is just God, God is too much. 
God is too much. Uh, Mr. Okwa, your hand is up. Please don't be offended. I, I'm not trying to hug the limelight. I, yeah, there is I nobody hugging anything here. Anybody can talk. Please. I want to express one huge shock that made me just bow for God when I came to this country. You know, what we are used to, we know how our own environment is. The first time I received shock, well, of course, I'd always known that there's uh, this thing called uh, daylight saving time, where the time in the in London would be one hour different from the time in Nigeria. So I'd always known about that. So it wasn't a surprise. But what, first of all, not just surprise, shocked me was when we got to a point that by 4.30 in the afternoon... It is, it is dark. It was already... From 4 o'clock, it started getting dark. And it just confused everything I knew. Then, and this continued till after... Now, as I am talking to you right now, it is 19 minutes past 9 in the night. And I am looking outside. It is still bright, like 6 o'clock. Uh, Sam, Sam, let me let me tell let me let me let me tell you something. Hmm. By the grace of God, visit go to Scandinavia, go to Sweden and Finland. Uh, in fact, in Finland, uh, at midnight, at midnight is day daylight. Midnight uh, is 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 like day. <laughs> you won't you won't be, you won't believe the confusion that I have found myself in. Several yes. because of because of this, you know, lost all sense of time because uh, look at as I'm as I'm talking to you, I'm looking outside, I'm seeing blue sky, you know, broad daylight. So and I was wondering why well, I just couldn't. I just had to say, God, you are too much. You are because too the, the longest the longest day is June twenty six or something. So we are nearing it now. The longest you day know. time in the year. Is in June, and, uh, June, June twenty something. So we are we are going towards it. And before now, I, before I came here, I'd never, never even heard of it. This thing you are telling me that uh, in Finland at some time at uh, twelve midnight. Midnight. I've it never heard daylight. of it before. It's broad daylight. Go and Google it. <laughs> Been to uh, Scandinavia. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. It is only God that can do this kind of thing. Only it's, God. As well, it's always it always interests me. You know. It, when, when it is when it is uh, January one, okay, you turn on your television. They are celebrating New Year in Australia, <laughs> in New Zealand, <laughs> and they would have, we are still they would have reached it so many hours before we get there. <laughs> yeah, it's, ah, it's wonderful. It's <laughs> they really would have wonderful. reached it so so many so many hours before us. Well, we will now we will now come and reach there and say, ah, is it the same New Year that we are celebrating, or is it different? Ah. <laughs> uh, the heavens really, really, the heavens really proclaim the glory of God. They do. It's fantastic. They do. They do. Who who else is here? Mister Olawande, are you still here? Yes, sir. Uh, you go on the screen and then you disappear. What happened? You went to eat and then you came back. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. What? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? No, 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 no. no, no. Well, hold on. Uh, Thomas wants to say something. Uh, I'll come back to you one day. Yes, Thomas. Okay, sorry. Uh, it was, I just wanted to ask a question um, to what I've just been said. About um the day, day. so I uh, it does that mean that or well, let me put it this way, doesn't it mean that um since four o'clock is is still is it, like night is is the early hours of the night like it's like the early hours of the night in this side, it doesn't it look like they do, can they factor their time can they change their time in a way. That's okay. They will understand that this cloud thing and all oh, is that. I mean, is that God's or human thing to fix? Because well, then I'm just they, imagining they, they, how they have what they call daylight saving time. So they they change it by one hour. 
but it doesn't it doesn't make it, it makes a little difference but not that that much difference you know because i'm wondering why i would be in the office by four o'clock and it's almost like it's nine o'clock or something and then I'm get, i get home then that by the time you're supposed to sleep by 12 o'clock and into one o'clock then it's almost like the day is already break like Sleep wouldn't be interesting if it is not that. So I don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> That's just my view. <laughs> uh, the, 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 such a good is the work of God. Yes, Mr. Mr. Wandy. Good evening, sir. I was calling you the other time, but we couldn't find you again because uh, mm -hmm. the, the question I have for you, I have for you is that why do men know that God exists, but then they don't want to know him? They know he exists, but don't want to know him. Why would somebody know that God exists, but not want to know him? I guess the people that do that are... Uh are free to be committed. Uh, the, 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 because it even happens to us Christians sometimes. We, 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 we deny the existence of God in the sense that we want to, we want to hide. We ask him to excuse us for one minute to excuse us for one minute so that we can sin a little and come back. I think it's out of convenience. People who don't want to know, who don't want to commit themselves to God, they, they, they want to be, they don't, they, 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 they don't want to be committed. Wendy, well, let me tell you a scripture. So maybe you, maybe you can talk more to it. Romans one twenty one, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchange the truth of God for a lie uh, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Just speak to this scripture concerning the question I raised. Yeah, I guess the men decided to be to to have pride in themselves. Pride in the sense that they they thought they they, they thought to themselves that they they just like the the fallen angel, they decided to be God unto themselves rather than believe I've, in I've, the. I've never, I've never understood that one. I don't know how how somebody can be with God and then think that they can rebel, they can rebel and 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 get away with it. Me, I don't, I don't understand that one. Maybe you can educate me on that one. I don't know. I don't know how that can be. It's pride. You, they, they, they want to, they, they want to. But like, how, 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 do, how can they think they will prevail? Is that story even correct? Yeah, I don't know whether that story is, is true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How can they rebel against God? Ah, okay, okay, hey, God. Hey, okay, I don't is it not the, is it not, unless, is it not the same God thing himself we are wanted about it now. to happen? God I mean, wanted it to happen. For God, his own God, God. God. God, God that we are talking about now, everything that happens is in control. There's nothing that God does not 
does not does not know everything that is happening. God knows the beginning, knows the end. He can control. There's nothing that happened without Him. You know, He's the one behind everything. If there's something that He does not know, it means that it's not God. So He's yeah, so God. Maybe he's he wanted control. them to rebel. Mm -hmm. Ah, maybe you, I don't know, but it's that story. Every time I look at it, I always look at it. Like, ah, this one, I don't think this story is correct. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I also think that in that in in in, in the word God sometimes is bastardized. Permit me to say, I stand to, to be corrected in a way that different deities or different um angelic bodies, different uh, ETs are given. They use the name. For them, God, 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 and so sometimes when you look at the, the biblical stories, where sometimes God is asking some people to go and lay ambush and pick women for themselves, uh, forcefully. So I, I'm thinking, is this God like the, the word God? I, I think the word oh, it was God Jesus, is not, that was Jesus, not is used for a collective of different kind of it, it was, it was Jesus that, that was giving those commands. That's a different discussion. Oh. <laughs> that was Jesus. <laughs> that was well, Jesus. I, I... We'll do that in a different discussion. Um, let me let me pose the last question or the last two questions. They are related to uh, um, uh, Benedict Alibe. Okay, Benedict, I throw a salute. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Good evening sir. Yes, we're talking about the revelation of God. How is God? This is not an easy question, so I'm going to tell you. <laughs> but you can maybe you'll be able to educate me up in, in this. How is God revealed in the cross of Jesus Christ? How is God revealed in the cross of Jesus Christ? Yes. How does the cross reveal God? I think by by suffering. You have to tell me more than that. <laughs> you want to think about it? I think so. It's better we think about it. Okay. Um, does anybody have an answer? Rather than me calling someone because we are running out of time. Who 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 has an idea? God is revealed in the cross and he is also hidden in the cross. How does the cross reveal Christ, re reveal reveal God, and how does he hide God? Okay, let's, let's address this quickly. The cross, of course, hides God because it is, it is full of reproach. So, um, um, in fact, you know, the, the very idea of the cross is going to make some people think it cannot be God. You know, I mean, why would he, you know, I mean, I've got them now. They killed God, nailed him on the cross, etc. you know. Huh? But the cross, okay, is one of the greatest expressions of the love of God that you can get. Because Jesus went to the cross for us. Huh? He took all that punishment for us. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Our chastisement was laid upon him by his stripes. We are healed. It's, it, is, it is one of the greatest expressions of the love of God that you can get is in the cross of Jesus Christ. That's how God used to reveal himself as love. But that revelation can only come to those to whom it is revealed. Otherwise, uh, see, Jesus is a sanctuary and a stumbling stone. So some people, for them, is a stumbling stone. I can, how can the person who is supposed to save people not be able to save himself? <laughs> you, you, you understand? Uh, how can the person that is supposed to give life be killed? Okay? That is how God hides the glory of Jesus. 
But when you open your eyes, you will see that it's a, just a fantastic manifestation of God's love for us. Mr. Yandang, please pray for us. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We thank you because even in our imperfections, you have loved us, you have helped us, and you have continued to shine your light in our lives. Lord, in any way that we have seen and have fallen short of your glory, we ask for mercy. Continue to direct us, continue to be the lamp unto our paths. Continue to help us, Lord, to stay focused on you, to understand you every day of our lives. Help us to be better people. Help us to be practical with the things that we hear. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you for this meeting. Thank you because, Lord, your light has been revealed to us. As we go forth, we ask, oh Lord, that you be with us, help us to have sound sleep. As we also pray at 12, Lord, come and fellowship with us. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. For in Jesus' name, we are free. Amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Say to the righteous, yeah, the apple yeah, of God's eye. God 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 bless you. 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 God